Hi everybody, this is Matt Geary at the LSCC 2014. I'm here with the ever popular Mr. Matt Dixon. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well, thank you. It's been a really good show so far. Yeah, it's, 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 trying to get to talk to you is really impossible there. It's like very popular. Last time we saw you last year, you had a little booth over there somewhere, I think. Where you oh, you got big booth. Yeah. All going well then? Definitely, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have a bit more space. You know, it's uh, I can I can get more stock out, and uh, it gives people a, a better opportunity to see my work as well. If you've got one table, sometimes you can get um, closed in a little bit. Well, you're uh, you're quite a big congoer because I've seen you at three. I saw you this last year. I saw you at the Manchester MCM. I think I saw you at MCM here as well. Uh, are you just? Are cons a good? Uh, are they good for business? They are good for business. I mean, they're always up and down in terms of sales. You never know quite what to expect. But um, regardless of how busy they are and how much action the cash box gets, they're always good fun. You know, it's a great crowd of people at the comic cons, at the tattoo shows that I do. It's uh, it's it's a really fun way to spend a weekend. What tattoo shows? Did you go to the uh, tattoo tea party in Manchester recently? No. Tattoo tea party, no. Uh, tattoo jam I've done and tattoo freeze and there's more tattoo shows coming up this year. Um, that's a really, really fun group of folks to uh, to spend time with. It's great. You, uh, you do tattoo shoes, but you seem to be lacking in tattoos. Yes, I'm a blank canvas still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a few of them have tried to persuade me. And to be quite honest, seeing the tattooists work at those shows uh, has just blown me away. Um, I, I, I'm familiar with tattoos. I've got tattooed family members. My brother is pretty much covered um, but the work that goes on at those events is just mind-blowing so yes I'm, I'm tempted I'm tempted so you wouldn't uh, trade in your uh, your your stylus for a for a, a tattoo gun uh, well it's been mentioned a few of those tattoo two artists have, uh, have, have suggested it um, we'll see who knows who knows no plans at the moment <laughs> <laughs> good show okay so for those who don't know you um, you do all of your work obsessively on a tablet, on Photoshop, you don't use paints or anything like that? No, it's been uh, nearly 15 years now I've been fully digital. Um, I use Photoshop uh, and a Cintiq, which is you know, a posh screen that's got all that tablet stuff built into it. Um, but I still paint with my old brushes. Before I packed away my acrylic paints, uh, I got my old brushes, some white paper and some black acrylic paint. Made lots of little splodges and uh, smudges with my thumb, little spatters with toothbrush, all the things I used to do with real paint, and scanned all that in. And those are the basis uh, of the brushes I use in fact. All right, so the templates used for templates, very good, very good. So what's the difference between using brushes and using Photoshop, or is it so advanced these days that it doesn't really have a massive difference? Well, it's been 15 years, as I say, since I last did my acrylic painting, so the memory has begun to fade with age. Um, I think the biggest thing with digital is the convenience and the speed. If you think paint, you imagine that you're working with traditional paint, then I think you can get a very similar finish. Um, it's not as tactile. You can't stuff your thumb in it. You can't smell it. Um, but it's much cleaner. I don't have pencil shavings in my hair anymore. Uh, bits of paint stuck on the end of my nose. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's the convenience that makes the big difference. And when you're working with tight deadlines sometimes for illustration work, uh, that, that, that's a real boon to be able to not, you don't have to wait for drying. Uh, you don't have to uh, repaint huge portions. I suppose it's more forgiving with mistakes as well. That's true. Although I'm not a fan of the undo button. If I make a mistake, I try and correct it the way I would do uh, with acrylics and, and just paint it out. But when the client comes back and wants the sky change into a different color, it's much easier to do that with Photoshop. <laughs> so then you do, um, what's the word, commissions then? So you've got people ask for specific things and you do that for them? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I, I make my living as an illustrator, really. Uh, the, 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 Oh, last time we talked, you did uh, like World of Warcraft cards and things like that and stuff, yeah. Do you still do stuff like that? Absolutely, yeah. The uh, World of Warcraft uh, trading card game has sadly finished now, but there are other opportunities in that area. Um, yeah, so loads of role-playing game stuff, uh, magazine illustration. I do a lot of work with uh, Metal Hammer magazine and things like that. Uh, video game stuff, because I worked in video games for about 12 years before I went freelance. So uh, what video games have you done? Uh, oh, loads. Uh, 
Harry Potter games, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I worked on uh, some stuff with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon. Not the famous games, unfortunately, some of the ones that came after, uh, but loads, loads, going right back to the days of the Super Nintendo and the uh, Mega Drive. No way, wow, wow. Uh, an old hand. Earlier than that, my first games were on the uh, Commodore 64, but I wasn't professional then. Commodore 64? My God. That's a <laughs> Grey hair, you know, I've been going for a while. <laughs> no way. Okay, so um, we've got a lot of lovely pieces here, a lot I've seen. I have the Red Riding Hood on my wall uh, at home. It's a pride of place above my stairs. I've seen uh, the Red Angel. Is this new? Is this new? Not new. Isn't it? I didn't see it last time. It's an old image, um, which when I posted it online didn't get a huge amount of attention. So it, was, it never sort of worked its way into my usual convention stock. Uh, every once in a while I like to bring a new one in just to see how it goes uh, and at the Manchester show I think it was um, she had a debut and she sold out completely so I took her to the next show and she sold out again and she's um, yeah she's she's become one, one of the more popular ones now oh, she's she's beautiful man I love it just goes to show that um, the uh, the audience on the internet isn't necessarily a reliable gauge of how uh, how popular things will be. This is so true. We have found this. Uh, Facebook, Facebook especially is a fickle, fickle place. Oh yes, you can go mad if you spend too much time in there. Yeah. Definitely, it must get more likes, but it doesn't really matter because nobody cares. Yeah. So obviously, it seems you've got two sort of sections. You sort of you've got robots and you've got curvy ladies. Why those two things? Uh, I th that's just the way it's gone, really. When I first started doing shows, there was a variety of stuff, and there still is a variety of personal work goes on, uh, but it was the pin-up stuff and the robots which really seemed to click with people. So I enjoyed doing that work, so I did more. That perhaps helped make them even more popular, and then I was approached to do a book full of pin-ups, so that's kind of rumbled on on its own. The same with the robots now, and th they're, they're both so popular that the other work has, has sort of been pushed into the background a little bit. Oh, very good. Well, Matt Dixon, it has been an absolute pleasure. I will no doubt be back to buy some of your wares later on today. And um, thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. It's been good to see you. Cheers, Matt. Thank you very much.